Hey everyone, we're live. Who's here? Who's watching? Six people, seven people, 10 people. Thank you so much for joining. It is our fourth and final uh, baby shower of the year baby shower of 2024. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight we're taking a look at some adorable white-tailed prairie hares. They're teeny, they're tiny, they're super cute. Uh, as people are slowly filtering into the live, please say hi. Let us know uh, where you're watching from, who's just joined us. Uh, Michael Michel Bourassa is your name French? It seems French. So tell us where you're watching from. Are you watching from Calgary? Tell us what community last live. I think we had someone from Edmonton, um, someone from Airdrie. So yeah, lots of people. Hey, Bonnie Presser, thanks for joining. Uh, we were just saying, hey, Bonnie Presser is always one of the first people to come to the live. So thanks for coming every time, Bonnie. Um, yeah, let us know where you're wa watching from. My name is Becky. I've been your host for the past four weeks. It's the last one for this year anyway. Uh, tonight joining us on the live, we have one of our wildlife rehabilitators and our clinic supervisor, Kyla. And in the chat right now, we have uh, one of our summer uh, workers. Her name is Neowith, and she will be saying hi to you and popping some, some important uh, information into the chat. Shirley Hinkle. Hey, Shirley, where are you watching from? So why are we here? We're here, first of all, to raise funds. Summer is the busiest time of year for us. We take in six to seven times more patients than in the in the off season. You know, that's like over 100 every week. Our staff are run off their feet. So it's a lot of mouths to feed. Uh, it's a lot of patients to treat and, you know, give medications to. So fundraising is a big one. But of course, another big one is we want to show you, our supporters, you know, something you wouldn't be able to see out in the wild because mothers would be, you know, feeding their babies uh, in, in private, in hidden spots. So it's a good opportunity for you to see some cool stuff up close. Hey, Kenneth Kirby, thanks for joining us. Um, okay, so we have lots of different ways for you to um, take part. Uh, we have a 50-50 running. Neil With will pop that link into the chat for you right now. Last I checked, I think it was 16000 That can go all the way up to 20000 It will be going until June 30th, and the winner will be contacted on July 1st, on Canada Day. So make sure you get your tickets before they are gone. Uh, the second way we have is a, a baby shower incubator fundraiser. We use these for our babies, also for our critical patients, and we're short a few. We, we saw a big uptake from last week, which is really great. Thanks everyone who donated. Uh, we're still a little bit short, so Neowith can pop that link into the chat for you. And our final initiative, this is only for you people watching, the 21, 24, 25 of you watching right now. The first five donors of $25 or more via the dedicated donation link that Neowith will pop into the chat for you, will be sent a special thank you gift in the post. This is something that only happens at the baby shower. You cannot get it on our website. It's only once a year. Guys, last week, there were still spots left. So make sure you get your $25 donation in. And I've been saying for the whole baby shower, the top three donors of the whole baby shower month get a special gift. Actually, it's the top four. I'm so sorry, I was wrong. The top four donors of the whole Baby Shower Month will get an extra, extra special thank you gift in the post. Again, only during the Baby Shower. You can't get it on our website. Uh, so that's about it. I think Neowith has popped all those links into the chat. Uh, we are going to go over and meet one of our wildlife rehabbers. As I told you, her name is Kyla, and I'm just going to flip around to her. There she is. Hello. All right. Thanks for doing this tonight, Kyla. Um, a few questions before we get into the important stuff. So we have some baby hairs with us. Do we know any of the circumstances about why they've come into care? Um, one of the ones that we're feeding tonight was uh, kidnapped from um, a home location and we weren't able to um, return it back. So we, um, we bring them in, we try, um, the, the moniker is baby hair, leave it there, um, unless they're injured. Mom feeds them twice a day, first thing in the morning and then in the evening. So we, uh, we want to make sure we leave them where we find them. Um, hairs, they, they leave their babies in the weirdest places. So um, it might seem like they're out and exposed and in a dangerous place, but the best thing to do is leave them there unless they are injured. Right. Okay. And so we have, how old are the ones we're going to be seeing? 
Uh, the ones we have tonight are between two and three weeks old. Awesome. Okay. Um, hares and rabbits are different. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about that. What are some of the differences between hares and rabbits? Um, there's a couple big differences between them. They are from the same family, which is the lagomorph, lagomorph family, which includes pika, which you see up in the mountains. Um, rabbits are um, have smaller ears, shorter noses, um, usually the white button cotton tails, um, and the um, and they like to live in wrens underground, is what they're called, and the babies are called kits. Hares. Um, prefer to live in little dips in the ground. They don't dig underground. Um, they have big, tall ears, which is usually what gives them away. And um, they they prefer to run instead of hide. Rabbits will freeze. Hares run. Um, so you'll see them up and on top of on top of the ground instead of digging down underneath. Amazing. Okay. Um, so these ones are pretty young. So how often are we feeding them at this age? Uh, we only feed them twice a day. We mimic mom um, as best we can. If they come in and they're they're in really rough shape, sometimes they'll get three feeds a day because we, that's how we get some extra fluid into them to help stabilize them. Okay, and what I see something over here that's prepared. What are we feeding them? What we're feeding them is a specialized formula for um, white-tailed prairie hares. Um, and so it's specialized by um, a veterinary company in the States. And they, they make it and we bring it up here and then we mix it with warm water because we want to mimic um, body temperature as close as possible. All right, I'm going to flip around from you while you just get ready. We have a lot of people watching. This is one of our highest viewerships of this year. Thank you so much for joining us. Amanda Stork Camp. Hey, Amanda, thanks for coming. Um, I'm just letting Kyla get ready. Oh, wow, guys, these are so cute. All right, I'm flipping around. I'm going to be quiet. So when we do our feedings, we've talked about this before, we have to keep our voices quiet as to not stress out our patients so they don't become habituated to human voice. So we're going to be silent. Pop your questions in the chat. We will answer them in real time afterwards. Never a dull moment. All right, she's got it. She couldn't reach in. We have a really long carrier that was hard for her to get to. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the chat, we have a slightly different format. Um, we're going to be answering your questions in real time after the feeding. So we'll read out your questions live and answer them live. So stick around, please. Pop them into the chat now, but we'll answer them after.
So we're just going to let Kyla move them out so I don't have to keep whispering. Uh, in case I didn't mention, yeah, so in wildlife rehab when we do feedings and treatments, we're always silent. This prevents uh, patients from getting too stressed out, it prevents them from, you know, um, becoming used to the sound of people's voices, stuff like that. So we're always quiet. Um, and yeah, it's just the rehab protocol, I suppose. All right, we're going to sit back down and we have a few more questions. This is where we're going to also answer your questions. That was great, Kyla. The last one was um, starving. Um, okay, that was wonderful. I want to talk about something a little bit more serious, an important topic, though. Mm -hmm. Capture myopathy. Uh, and I, you know, maybe some of our viewers will know where what it means, um, maybe not. Um, so, can you talk a bit about capture myopathy, what it is, uh, and I guess who is, what types of animals are affected by it? Um, a lot of animals can be affected by capture myopathy. What it is is uh, when the body is under a significant amount of stress for even short periods of time, um, it can create um, a, a process in the body that the muscles start to break down and that includes the heart muscle. So if they're very stressed and or, um, or just very susceptible to it, um, it can cause them to, to die. Um, there aren't a lot of treatments for it. Even if we do catch early signs, unfortunately, it is mostly fatal. Um, hares are one of the species. A lot of birds can get capture myopathy, but also our ungulates, so deer, elk, moose, and that's why you don't see a lot of adult ungulates in care because they, uh, they're, they're prey and they're so programmed to try and get away that unfortunately that's what often happens. So would that be, uh, I guess, across the board for, for most pe or all prey species that they're more susceptible to capture myopathy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's something that, yeah, we deal with and we, I guess, like the public to know how important they understand or understanding what capture myopathy is. Um, we often get baby hairs in every year into our care that we're actually just fine on their own. We do our best at Calgary Wildlife to get that mes messaging out, but of course we know that not everyone follows us on socials and all of that. So how, Kyla, can you tell us how just like regular folks will be able to know on their own, like, hey, this hair is totally fine or actually this hair needs help? Um, a hair that is uh, totally fine will, will not move a lot when you see it approaching. Um, the babies will just freeze. They don't have scent like the parents. That's why the parents leave them. Um, so it is quite often a long time between you seeing an adult hair nearby um, the baby because they move away for to protect them. Um, if you do see a hair that you feel like is in trouble, uh, sometimes the babies, some of the bigger birds, 
Um, some, like domestic animals as well, will chase them um, and sometimes pick them up. If you're able to move, if they're not injured, clearly injured, if you can move them to a place close to where you found them, um, like under some bushes, or if you've got a box that you can cut a hole in that's big enough that the adult can still get to them, um, then they can have a little bit of protection from rain or hail um, or other animals um, and then still be there for mom uh, to come back and take care of. So I guess the point is a baby hair on its own doesn't mean that it needs help. No, that's right. exactly right. It's uh, just because it's by itself does not mean that it, it needs help. And so we often use the term accidental kidnapping and wildlife mm -hmm. rehab. And I guess that just means um, people thinking that the animal needs help. They take it or bring it to us. And then when the mom comes back, uh oh, their baby's gone. Okay. And I guess people can always call us, right? If they're not sure. Absolutely. And uh, we know it's it's all coming from a, a place of people with big hearts. Um, so we're, we're happy if you call and ask because we can always advise you on uh, best steps. All right. And when are we going to be releasing these guys roughly? Uh, these guys will go in probably another three weeks. Awesome. All right. I am now going to turn to the... Uh, questions on our webs or the the live itself that people okay. if I can I'm just trying I'm double tasking here I have the phone in one hand and the computer on my left hand uh, sorry let's see okay here we go question oh this is from Deborah Austin and the question is from Darcy who is age seven why do you have to feed them milk well, Darcy, um, that is because that is just like with um, other mammals, like people, um, they get milk from their moms and it's got all the vitamins and nutrients in it and it's got some special stuff that helps their tummies as well so that they can develop immunity just like we do. Amazing. And wow, we have another question from Deborah Austin. But, or the question is from Ava, who is age nine. Why do you need a towel wrapped around the back of it? So Ava, we use those towels because they're they're scared. Even though we're giving them something they really want, they try and get away, they back up. So we like to cover the back of them. Um, these guys are pretty good. We do have a few that we actually have to cover their heads um, so they, they are not getting any any input from around them because they, they can focus on eating and not being afraid. Wonderful. Zach Krause asked, how much do they typically drink at a time? Uh, that varies depending on age and hair. <laughs> we have a couple in care right now that eat five or six meals at a time, and we have one one little uh, little fella that likes to eat 16 meals at a time. <laughs> so um, as they grow, they want more. When they first come in, they don't obviously drink as much, um, and then they get to a point where they just decide they don't want it anymore, and they'll start drinking less again. So they tell us. Amazing. Uh, we have Rhiannon Morse. This is a great question. How do you know which ones have been fed and which ones still need dinner? Excellent question. Um, we use little wax, um, wax markers, the same ones that farmers use to mark their sheep um, in the springtime. And we put it on the back of their ears or inside their ears. And we have a sheet with all of the codes because we can have single colors, we can have double colors, we can have colors on the front of the ears, colors on the back of the ears. So uh, it's quite a process because sometimes we have a lot of them. And we do that with what other animals are we doing that as well with? Uh, we do it with the skunks when they first come in and the squirrels when they come in. Um, squirrels clean themselves a lot, so we actually use nail polish on them sometimes too. Amazing. On their nails, not on their fur. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that is, looks like it's the end of our questions. I don't see any other questions. Thanks everyone for coming though. I'm going to flip around to me and I'm going to do a final thank you and push for our uh, baby shower of this year. So we are, I think I forgot to tell you what our goal was, which was $30,000. $30,000 uh, covers... Uh, 
sorry, we're having someone trying to come into the door. I'm just wandering around the office. Uh, $30,000 covers uh, about two months of our food, two months of our uh, medications for all of our all of our patients. So yeah, we're cl we're almost there. We're almost there. We've done really well this year, um, but I think we need a little bit more of a push. Um, I, Kyla was making these weird j gestures with her hand. I thought she was telling me to move. <laughs> then I realized there was someone at the door. Okay, going back to my spot. Um, I'm going to ask Neowith to pop the 50-50 into the uh, chat one last time. Last time for the whole year, guys. This is going to get up to 20K. That's 10K for you, one of you right now, the winner, and 10K for our wild animals. Please make sure you share that around for us. Tell all your friends, your neighbors, your family. Uh, make sure you get your tickets before they're gone. That goes until the 30th of this month. The winner will be contacted on July 1st on Canada Day. So someone's going to be a very happy camper on Canada Day. Uh, the baby shower incubator GoFundMe, Neil with can pop that into the, into the chat right now. Um, Last week, as I said, there were still spots for those five donors of 25 or more. You only get those special gifts when you donate right now via that link. So um, the dedicated donation link that you with can pop into the chat. Um, first five donors from when we started of uh, 25 or more will get a gift in the post. And I changed three top donors to four top donors of the whole baby shower. So that runs until the end of this month as well. We'll get an extra, extra special thank you for gift in the post. You only get it at this time of uh, year during the baby shower. You cannot get it on our website. You cannot get it. Uh, it's not merch. It's special just for you. Um, so yeah, that's also through the dedicated donation link. I wanted to say a huge shout out. Thank you to everyone who, who, um, turned up for the baby showers, who's, you know, interacting with us on our socials, signing up for our newsletter, donating, supporting us. It makes a, a big difference to us and we really appreciate it. Uh, shout out to all of our staff and volunteers. They are so run off their feet at this time of year. Um, and so they really deserve a huge round of applause. So thank you to all of them. Thank you to you. There's still a few more days until the end of the shower, end of the month. You can still get your 50 50. You can still share with your friends. I will be announcing how much we've made uh, raised sometime next month. So thanks, everyone. Uh, it was great having you all join us. And we will see you again, same place, same time, different year in 2025. Have a great summer, everyone. And we'll see you next year. Bye.